the footman. If peasants are the backbone of this feudal society, the footman is the mailed fist. Or maybe a slap. A wild monkey slap. Oh. I would probably call him a man at arms, but that's the Age of Empires talking. But all I know is, one of my viewers said in, a, in his native language, footman translates to literally, man who likes feet. Just imagine that. My lord, we are under attack. We have archers, knights, and um, men who like feet. And you know them orc feet are big head on the orcly fans. <laughs> this will be the first video I've made since retiring from the Canadian Armed Forces, and I hope now that I have more free time to get some more content out. Thanks for the support along the way. So it has been a bit since I played Warcraft 1, and I fancied a little go. I thought, what other challenge could I try? Peasants cannot fight, so peasants only is out, but footmen made sense. They're the first unit you get, they are cheap, and since there are no ships or air units, they can fight everything. Problem is, footmen suck. Like, really bad. Footmen has 60 health, 2 armor, and 9 damage, are slow as shit, and are literally morons. A knight, for example, for only 450 more gold, has 90 health, 5 armor, and 13 damage, and are faster. The hardest part of this challenge is fighting with the dated controls, AI pathfinding more so than the enemy. Controlling massive groups of four dudes at a time with no control groups as they idiotically bump into each other or every single doodad on the map makes things really tough. Also, this game has hilarious mind placement sometimes, like upwards of an entire screen away, leading you to ask, where the fuck is the gold mine? Then of course, you have the super units of catapults, demons, but we will get to them. So let's get into it. Can you beat Warcraft, Orcs, and Humans using only Footmen? Also, side note, this game and Warcraft 2 are now available on the Blizzard Store. I have not met anybody who purchased them there, but is there a difference? Can you play multiplayer? I would absolutely crush a multiplayer matches of War 1 or even cast them. That could be so much fun. Anyways, let me know in the comments. I'll stick to the good old games version for now. Regent. Easy mission. Build six farms and a barracks and move on. Grand Hamlet. Another fairly straightforward mission. You get an archer here, so put his ass in the dirt. It's gonna really suck not using archers. They're easily the best unit in the game, besides summons. Get some squads of footmen up and go hunting. Kairos. This mission went way better than I initially expected. Because footmen don't need wood and you aren't making archers, you can actually get away with not harvesting that much lumber. The threat I was worried about here was just the AI. When shit hits the fans, your units kind of just go rover, coach. I'm a rover, coach. I'm just gonna go rover. No, don't just go rover and run the play, Jackie Moon. Once they take spearmen damage, they will drop what they are doing and attack that specific spearman, no matter who or what stands in the way, which leads to a lot of just footmen shoving past everything while getting slashed and stabbed and often dying on the way there. They actually ignore your commands, and shit is going nuts, so using the dated dog shit controls just doesn't work. I would give my left nut for an attack move. Imagine this game remade in the Warcraft 2 engine. Hmm, I actually know somebody who's actually working on this in real life. I hope it turns out good. Build up enough men who like feet and swarm the enemy as best as you can. Level 4, the Dead Mines. This is the first real hurdle of the run. We have to go rescue Lothar, who has been gone for 20 months? Can we just talk about that right quick? Like 20 months? And we are only just sending a rescue party? That's almost like two full years. What the fuck did they think he was doing down there? I feel like in real life, if he didn't come back in like three hours, I would send a rescue force, especially in a place called the Dead Mines. Eh, but I'm old fashioned. Anyways, we have a squad of men who love feet, some archers and clerics, but I really want to try and do this purely footman. So I kill off my archers and clerics and form a phalanx. Now we can literally sit here in a few key places and let the enemy come to us. They still have macro mission AI, so it seems like they quite frequently send ogres to attack us. If we are patient, we can just let them come to us one at a time. This mission has 21 ogres in it, and each ogre can potentially kill a man who lusts over feet in 3 to 4 hits. And with 5 footies, I really don't think that I can win this through attrition alone. I spend a good half hour trying different formations, different choke points, and I just don't think it can be done without heals. I even tried rushing into Lothar, but the prison itself has like 8 ogres just waiting for you, so it could not be done. I generally tried 4 or 5 times to do it without assistance, but I need to consult Jesus and bring clerics for heals. 
With heals, this mission is an absolute joke. I even use Lothar to execute the clerics and make a run for the exit. The Force of Elwyn, back to the verdant greenlands of Azeroth. We get my favorite unit, but have to put him down like a lame horse and get ready for the onslaught. Doing men who jerk off defeat only makes things difficult in the sense that we always start with so little of them. After killing off my starting force, we are often left with about one to two footmen to stave off the orcish horde. We gotta act fast. Most starts of the rest of the campaign will be a mad dash to either massing up footmen or getting upgrades. Upgrades are a big deal and highly increase their effectiveness. Mass up footmen while killing off attack waves and slowly pick away at the enemy. The enemy always has a huge garrison, but they do not retrain them. They only train attack waves. So if you can hack away at their numbers, and as long as you have the production to keep making footmen, you can slowly grind the enemy down. Destroy the base, and move on. Northshire Abbey. My god, I expected this to be harder than it seems, but I completely underestimated how hard it would be. This mission starts you with your town under attack by a large enemy force of footmen, archers, and knights. Knights and raiders are fucking nasty, and they can often solo three of your foot perverts. The archers are exposed at first, so I rush in and kill them. Then I train a peasant and try to hide him. You actually have enough starting money to build one peasant and rebuild a town hall if it goes down. I have an idea though. I notice the enemy really hates Carl. They will hunt him to oblivion, and if the peasant gets hit, he literally disobeys your commands and just run away, which makes things really annoying. But I figured I could use the enemy bloodlust against them. I train a peasant, kill the archers, and then form a diamond formation. It takes a few tries, but I lure the knight through the diamond and figurate the peasant while my footies slash away. The tactic will be very handy in almost every mission, turning Warcraft into a tower defense game. Once I secure the camp, I don't get much time. The enemy attack waves start almost immediately, and they have almost a constant flow of attacks. Another knight comes in from the north with clerics, and they are so fucking good with their heals and crazy range, which causes more problems. Finally, kill that wave, and then another knight comes from the east. I just can't get a break. Give me five goddamn seconds, please. I peasant lure him, and finally, finally, I can start macroing up. This is like an hour in, by the way, but I managed to secure the base with footmen only. Now I need to worry about the next threat. Catapults. Oh, catapults. My sweet hairy nuts catapults. I send a pervert up to scout, and since there is no fog of war, you will see the enemy attacks coming. Interrupting the enemy while they're on the way to the rally point seems to allow you some free hits, but catapults just break all the rules. They can hit footmen without leading their targets. They fire so fucking fast and take a shit of a beating to bring down. With the enemy heals and archers being a pain, really makes me dread the thought of grunts only. Once I get an economy and a good mass of footmen, I need to get aggressive, otherwise I'll just get whittled down over time. Slowly grind the enemy walls of flesh until we break through. I place footmen on the corner of the roads in order to allow footies to attack building after building without my micro. I finally burn this town to the ground. Will things get easier from here on? No. 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 Sunny Glade. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but um, uh, there ain't no footmen here. I mean, need to kill guards of a prison and release the peasant prisoners inside. So, this is it. Run invalidated. Legally, no. You cannot beat Warcraft using only fetish of feet men who like to lick toes. Okay, last one, I promise. So the compromise I came up with is to use only my starting knights to kill the prison guards, and then suicide them. The knights look like footmen on horses with a similar sprite, so let's just get to it. Once the prisoners come back to camp, I decide to mine from the north mine. This turned out to be a good idea because immediately after, two spearmen started pegging my farm from the south. These prisoners have one health each, which means the spearmen could have deleted my entire squad in mere seconds. Problem is, I still have no footmen, and the enemy is about to send a second wave. If these waves overlap, I am more than fucked. There also is a skeleton here, and believe it or not, these guys actually cause a lot of problems. Normally they are a joke, but when you are low on troops and money, this is a huge issue. A third attack wave comes, and it's a goddamn raider, and he lives up to his namesake, and he murders four of my peasants. All the while, these two spellcasters just go ham and summon spiders and skeletons from my dead peasants. Just like Warcraft 3, the more of our ranks fall, theirs are bolstered. Sending one footman at a time to their deaths just isn't going to cut it here. One footman versus two spearmen is a bad trade, if at all. I build my barracks a little higher, thinking the enemy spearmen might start attacking my town hall, which is a tanky boy. With this, I can focus on the raider. This works well. 
I lose one peasant, but the spearmen and casters are dead, and I can do the dance with the raider. The 15% miss rate is a massive pain in the ass in this game. I'm not sure the exact stats, but there's a chance that units do zero damage, and it, man, it's fucking annoying. Almost like the enemy can block. Just trying to get a surround on these enemies is a nightmare too. They just take their sweet friggin' time to get into a spot they can attack from. One guy might just stop fighting. One guy will walk literally the longest route he can away, and man, with these controls, it just boils my piss. After about a dozen or so tries, I actually stabilized, meaning I have a healthy group of footies, my upgrades are on the way, and I'm operating at a gold surplus. I can start fighting back. The checkerboard formation wins the day here too. Once I'm stable, I simply move in and nip away at the enemies. They don't go down easily, but with some dancing and waves of soldiers, I finally break them. Once you get the barracks down, it's usually smooth sailing. Usually. Medivh. This was the level that scared me from the conception of this challenge. And the first question by the viewers, can I beat Medivh with five footmen? Let's see. The only positive here is that I get full upgrades. I think this is the only level that gives you free upgrades. Doesn't help much against his big daddy demon. There's one demon in this map and he literally one shots footmen unless he misses. This will be the first time I've played this mission without sniping Medivh from his bedroom in decades. Go away, Baton! The other threat here is fire elementals. These gals consistently two-shot footmen and attack super fast, so no, I cannot beat this with footmen only. But it might actually be possible once we get to my tactic later. So spamming heals is harder than it looks, but luckily I stay alive and get down to the slimes. These guys have insane health and armor, but do little damage. I whittle them down, almost get surrounded, and then form up for the big daddy. I lube up and try to find a perfect surround, but man, Big Daddy just cuts me down over and over, and the pathfinding often just sends my men in one at a time. When you attack a stationary unit, they almost always get a free hit or two before your unit closes in. So I got to thinking, all enemies are obsessed with peasants, but maybe they're just as angry at the clergy. I form a diamond and bring in a cleric, lure Big Daddy, and he still dies, but looky, it almost worked. I form up in this room and do it again. The clerics are slow as ass though, but RN Jesus is with me, and the demon whiffs three attacks while my footmen slash away and take him down. Only three footmen, and the final boss is still here. I charge into Medivh's room and slash him down, spamming heals, and he goes down easier than I expected. So looking back, I wonder, if I was to use the clergy me to lure the fire elements, would I have a similar result? Maybe, but I'm not going to find out. I can feel my body slowly dying as this game goes on. The Black Morass. Back to the macro grind. We have two bases to beat here, although there is only one bridge into our base. This is a bad where the fuck is the gold mine level, so I make a bunch of extra peasants in order to allow a steady income. The new threat here is Unholy Armor and Poison Cloud. Unholy Armor takes half the unit's current HP and makes them immune to damage for, as the wiki states, 1,000? for what I assume is frames? Either way, this sucks, and when used on a raider means they can kill 10 footmen and still move on to your base. Poison Cloud, on the other hand, is it puts a blotch of poison damage that shifts around, killing stuff underneath after a period of time. What makes it really shitty is it takes all control away from you. It aggros all units underneath every tick of damage, so you literally cannot tell your men to run away if there are a few clouds in the area. It also scares peasants underneath too, so one cloud on a gold line will completely disable your income if it doesn't just flat out kill it. Now, having said that, the slow isn't actually that bad. I decide to get aggressive faster than normal and it turns out the enemy bases do not have that many standing guards, meaning I could take the south base in about two waves, when I don't get surprised by catapults in the fog of war of course. Once it goes down, I move north and actually take it fairly easily too. This was actually inspiring. Perhaps the rest of the game won't be so bad. <laughs> the Temple of the Damned. Well, fuck. This level is a no build. You get a massive army that makes the level a joke, but <laughs> I'm using only footmen. You get a decent little squad of them, though. This level is a taste of patience and RNG. The enemy has a metric fuckton of spellcasters, and when crossing certain thresholds, triggers them in multiple ways. The first one is usually a mass spider spawn, but when I reload and try again, they go all poison clouds. Ugh, I fight through to the final bridge and try to manipulate the RNG in any way I could. 
It seems wherever I stand while attacking, it triggers them to do certain things. But impressively, almost every time I load, the AI does something different. Now I figured if I could just lure out the minimal guards, and I could also solo the spellcasters. But spellcasters do not go quietly into the night. These guys shoot flame like a bunch of Nod fanatics. I beat my head against a wall for ages, but somehow I luck out and I get the warlocks to get too excited and cast a huge hurricane of poison clouds. I even prepare for gas, gas, gas in real life. Goliath online. And watch as most of the units walk into their deaths. This is good. I try to clean up what's left, but the enemy does have an operational barracks, so they keep pumping out grunts. And without heals, my men slowly get whittled down. I have two footmen left. One critical and one healthy, and three enemy warlocks stand before me. Attacking in towns is a disaster. With all the streets and grids, it's so easy for units to bump into things like peons and get fucked. They will literally walk the longest way to get to the action, and the entire time they're just getting blasted. I tried for an hour with these two footmen, but I need to rethink my strategy. I tried to bait out better clouds, but it's just not working. Another hour goes by and I restart completely with clerics. Even with heals, this shit is bananas. I eventually, after a lifetime of pain, just squeak by with a handful of men. I kill the barracks and then take a breath as we finish off the rest. This level took way too long, and I do legitimately think it could be done without clerics, but man, you need immaculate control and RNG. Yes, in theory, someone better than me could do it. Rock hard and stone hard. Did someone say rock hard and stone hard? This level went actually a lot better than I thought it would. We have two more enemy bases and a shitload of entrances to my town. I use the build radius strategy to block off this exit, but trying to completely wall off the left costs too much time and money and I end up just getting overwhelmed. Second try, I just dedicate a squad of footies to the western flank. The problem is demons. These dingleberries come every so often, and if I don't do the peasant diamond, it will just take a full platoon of footmen to strike down these bastards. It's just their timing is always the worst, often doubling up with normal attack waves. Getting stable is a bit of a pain here, but once I get a healthy supply of men and money, just slowly do the same. Throw meat at the problem and hope for the best. I actually had a glimmer of hope after this. Boy, was I fucking wrong. Black Rock Spire. Well, things have been tough, but doable, right? This shouldn't be too bad. We have a singular entrance to our base and only three enemy bases. Wrong. This was an absolute slog. Next, we have Demon Dan. After a few losses, I used the site cheat code to do a little scout, and I found him. This warlock is responsible for the demon onslaught. One warlock hides in the very back of the spire's base and does nothing but summon demons over and over and sending them to my shit. Demon Dan will have to wait. The next problem is three bases. Three bases that send three separate attack waves, which often overlap, which sometimes means three to six raiders, necros, unholy armoring, and spearmen, which draws your men out of formation. The start, as usual, is a chore. The enemy comes quick, and since spellcasters start with a certain amount of mana, that means Demon Dan is soon going to be sending hell to your doors. With Demon Dan and the raider attacks, I need to do peasant grid trick, and it really helps. Just I always get surprised and panic when things go wrong. I was stuck in a hard place, trying to get upgrades or trying to get numbers. Both weren't going well, so I tried for about an hour before completely restarting and trying again. This time, I tried to get a wall set up. At least a bit of wiggle room and it helped a bit with spearmen. Sometimes they attacked the wall barracks instead of my men, which helped a lot. The left base is quite isolated from the other two, which can cover each other, so I opt to go there first. The entrance is guarded by a bunch of stuff but there's a path through the woods here that leads to the gold mine and the back of their base. Looks like a good flank, but trying to get these chuckle fucks through the narrow forest path is just a trial in patience. All the while, attack waves still come in and I need to try and do two things. Now, because of the aggro and the tight corridors of bases, my footies often get shot, trying to reach the shooter, but moose knuckle peons trudging through block my men's paths, which makes them turn around and go the long way around. And by then, they're dead. Having two spearmen in base can kill eight footies this way. Man, it's frustrating. I finally managed to crack the left base. One down. Stuff's looking good. I have a solid income, footmen, upgrades. Boom. Just gotta whittle down the enemy. Wrong. Again. You see, the enemy hasn't attacked me with catapults yet, which I found fishy. 
But what I didn't expect was the enemy wasn't just not attacking with catapults, he was stockpiling them. 16 catap... 16 catapults. I don't think you heard me correctly. 16! 8 per base, if not more. I thought I was fighting the Horde, not the fucking Imperial Guard Basilisk Battery. So, trying to break either of these bases looks like this. Also, Demon Dan is pissing me off, so I take a few commando squads and move to the far left and up through the corner. It takes way more commando squads than I wanted because of the pathfinding, but I finally silence this wank stain and can at least chill on the peasant grid lure. I try for almost two hours to break them. I try luring them out, but footmen are far too slow and even get deleted while running straight at the enemy. I try killing the standing guards, which would allow me to get anybody on top of the cats, but both bases have spearmen tucked away in their far corners, which are behind the artillery line, which makes it impossible. I was at my wit's end. I mined out two full gold mine, was low on income, low on footmen, and I even camped their mine and killed dozens of their peasants, but they keep spamming them. If I had a different run and the enemy attacked with these catapults, maybe I could have done it. But for me, I, myself, simply don't have the controls, the AI, or the resources to overwhelm the most OP unit in any of the Warcraft games besides archers. So I cave in, and I build a church. After praying to Jesus, I bring out some clerics and use the tactic that gave me PTSD from my deathless video, invisibility. I cloak four footmen at a time and move them in to kill their guards and catapults, but it still takes me upwards of 30 footmen to break through. I finally kill the east base and the empty spire. It's just me, my men who like feet, and the spire. I knock it down. Fireworks ensue, and the score screen speaks for itself. This was exhausting, but thanks for watching and supporting. I truly do enjoy this game, despite these challenge runs sucking my soul out. I may hold off on grunts only. I feel it may be too much for my innocent brain. So no, legally, I could not beat this game with only footmen. I was forced to heal, use knights on Sunnyglade, and invisibility on the last level. Apart from Sunnyglade, someone better than me might be able to pull it off, but you'll need perfect RNG. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.